welcome back. I am back in the van. I've been working with my boyfriend on doing some remodels over the past couple weeks, trying to get it prepared for this trip actually. And so here's what it's looking like right now. Right now it's trashed. I don't even know if you can hear me over the wind. I'm still working on getting everything organized on this trip. Don't mind my like boob pads right there. We just built these drawers this week and then these bench seats, storage space, fridge that pulls out, table that will pull out for working and then working on like the sides of the van still getting everything cleaned up i want to get more storage space like shelving up there um yeah yeah it's coming along i'm having a slow morning just kind of organizing the van it's my first morning back out here on the road and drinking coffee and i'm here on this like three week van adventure right now just traveling around california hiking mountains if you watched my last video you know i was gonna go to colorado and do more 14ers but i have to work quite a bit over these next three weeks as well and i was just getting a little overwhelmed trying to plan out the whole trip and the massive drive to colorado so i just decided to do California instead. And the only 14er I've done in California is Mount Whitney. There's actually a total of, I think it's 12 14ers in California. Some of them are quite difficult class fivers that I have no interest in as of right now <laughs> in doing, but um, I'm expecting these to be a little bit more challenging. From what I've been reading, California 14er rankings are a little bit different than Colorado rankings. I hear class three in California is more like a class four in Colorado class four in California is more like a class five in Colorado, etc. So, and there's just not as much information and resources out there for these California 14ers, aside from Mount Whitney, the most popular one. So it's going to be an adventure. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> cows <laughs> 6 a.m. I'm getting ready for White Mountain Peak I mean I got dressed but it's really cold out and so I got back in bed to just sip on some coffee before I hit the trail it sounds really windy outside and last time I checked the weather it looked like there was going to be a low of like 11 degrees up on the peak. I'm a little nervous about the cold <laughs> but it's going to be an easy hike just long and strenuous. When I say easy I mean non-technical. It's going to be about 15 and a half miles and 3400 ish feet of elevation gain. So my goal is to get back within about eight hours. We'll see if I can pull that off and hopefully not freeze. <laughs> but I'm excited to hopefully get another 14er checked off my list today. Weather conditions were easily the worst out of all the 34 14ers I had done at this point. Temperatures of 17 degrees, wind gusts so strong they kept trying to blow me over. 
I was very happy to be back to the parking lot and back in my van. I was cold and I was exhausted from the wind. 15 miles, five hours, 46 minutes. Yeah, baby. Okay, it's my first day working in the van and here's my setup. I'm rather nervous about a variety of things that could go wrong in this setup. One, not having a good enough connection. I'm going off my hotspot. I only have 50 gigs of high speed data. And so what's gonna happen after that? Can I still run video calls? Yet to be determined. I'm worried about not having the power I need given that I'm parked in the shade, given that it's gonna be 90 degrees over the next three days. And so I'm not parked in the shade. How am I gonna tolerate being in this van? But will I run out of power if I'm parked in the shade? So those are just two of my main concerns right now. And then of course, just not quite being comfortable. Not the best seat we've got going on, but anyway, gonna give it a try and I'll uh, keep you all updated. I am parked outside of a park so that I have access to a bathroom while I'm doing this work van life thing. This is literally the outfit that I'm going out in. And good thing it's a quiet town. Smooth morning working from the van so far. Everything went well for the most part. I had a few little hiccups this morning, like my entire table accidentally slid out and fell and I couldn't get it back in place for a minute there. So that had my heart racing a little bit before I was set to start work. And then other than that, I did have to move spots because my first spot was in the shade and I don't have the battery capacity to charge my laptop for very long when I'm parked in the shade and not getting that direct sunlight. So I moved to a sunny spot. It's starting to get a little stuffy in here, but I do have more windows that I can open. I also have a fan I can use that I can point at me. I have two fans right here ready to go. And so hopefully with just that, I'll be okay and all of the windows open if needed. For now, pretty good. Um, so other than that, Morning's complete. I'm gonna go get a little bit of a workout in. After I work out, I'm gonna do a quick little rinse off in the bathroom and then come back in my van, change back into my work clothes, and I think we'll be golden. So, so far, um, a lot of my anxieties are starting to dissolve a little bit. Um, everything's going okay. My next big anxiety is just running out of that high speed hotspot data. So, on that note, let's get a workout in. Lunch break, jog in 85 degrees. Successful day at work. No complications aside from what happened the very first thing this morning. I'm really stoked that I figured out how to make this work, working from my van. That being said, any issue could still arise at any time. And so we'll see if things keep chugging along smoothly, but I'm definitely feeling more hopeful and I am just so happy to be here, out here. Look at this beautiful place. I'm in Independence, California, and I can see Mount Whitney that I climbed back in 2016 when I hiked the PCT. Let me show you. There's my van. I found a pretty empty campground nearby with faucets. Nobody's here as you can see. So I'm over here filtering water, stocking up for the next set of adventures. Went to the grocery store, stocked up. I also got a burrito cause I'm really sick of eating bagged salads and deli sliced turkey. <laughs> so I found my camp spot now and look how stunning it is out here. It's dead quiet. Good morning. I just woke up, spilling some water for coffee. Now it's time to pack up my backpacking gear.
getting ready to hike to Mount Langley, which is a 22.5 mile long hike. So I'm breaking it up into two days. First night camping at Cottonwood Lakes, which is about eight miles. And then the following day, I'll be hiking up Mount Langley and then back to the van. I kind of wish I was doing it all in one day, just because I hear it's, you know, a relatively easy 14er, very gradual incline. I think I could have done it had I gotten a really early start and it would have been a fun challenge, but that's okay. This will be really nice and it'll be fun to camp out and backpack in just the tranquility of what I hear is a beautiful lake. So my bag is really heavy. <laughs> I packed a few luxury items like my Stephen King book that's like this thick, but it's the only book I had. And I don't think there's service up at the lake. I downloaded a few podcasts, but I just love having a book, something active to do. I mean, reading a book feels so much more active than just laying down listening to a podcast. So if I get there really early tonight, I didn't want to just be twiddling my thumbs. So you know what? It's fine. And then I'm packing like deodorants and contact solution. And what other luxury items do I have? My stove. I'm going to cook some food tonight, even though I didn't have to do that. I could have like made a sandwich or something to eat later, but we're going to roll with it. And I'm excited. And it's about time. It's uh, 1130. So it's about time to hit the trail. Made it to the trailhead. Yeah, it's a perfectly paved road to get here. I have a lot of food still left in my van and I'm a little worried that the bears might break in while I'm gone overnight. So I really hope that doesn't happen. This freaking book has got away like four pounds. <laughs> Glad to get this out of here while I hike to the top. I'm gonna bring my food, smell up a bit right now, and then hit the trail again. All right, so it's about 4.30. I don't really know how long this is gonna take me to get to the top. I think I have another like 2,500-ish feet of elevation gain. And I think around seven miles. So my goal is to get back before dark, but I brought a headlamp. I'm bringing a headlamp just in case. And I got warm clothes just in case. I got snacks just in case and plenty of water just in case. So, you know, if I'm coming down in the dark, it's an easy trail. So be it. I'm not worried. So let's do this. This is just so much fun. I just love this. <laughs> On campsite. I'll be back. This is the other side of the ridge. It's so quiet. Zero wind. <laughs> The shadow of the mountain. Isn't that neat? I'm getting really cold. Time to get down in my bag. 
get a sweatshirt on and get the heck down this mountain. Once that sun goes down. Ooh, it's, it's 720. Let's see how long this takes me. I'm gonna guess hour and a half. Four miles. I just have to say, I'm really thankful I got up here before all the smoke engulfed the views. And I got to be up here all by myself, which is so special. So coming tonight was so worth it. I highly recommend doing this. Setting up your tent at Cottonwood Lakes and then do the hike and then come back down and camp and do the easy little six miles in the morning. I made it back to my tent. So my goal was that hour and a half, but it ended up being more like an hour and 45. Not terribly off. I took it really slow coming down a section of it because it was loose. There's a bit of a ledge on one side. Nothing too crazy. That was like my first time really night hiking. I did like one brief night of night hiking on the PCT just for like an hour after dark, but I get a little spooked at nighttime, I'm not gonna lie. I always have this weird spooky sensation that something is following me or like I'm gonna see glowing eyes near me and a lot of creatures like to come alive at night so I prefer not to night hike but today, tonight was an exception it helps that it's like so barren up there on that mountain walking through a forest at night is honestly more intimidating because there's more that lives in the forest <laughs> so it was really nice today i did a total of about let's see 15 miles seven hours 37 minutes average miles per hour two <laughs> i got back and then people were clapping at me all the people that i had passed while i was going up and they were coming down at like 5 p.m. tonight. <laughs> yeah, so they're still awake with their headlamps on and they were all clapping because they saw my headlamp um, and they really couldn't find my tent. <laughs> but I found it, obviously. Well, now I'm gonna eat some dinner and tonight on the menu, let me show you. First, I brought some carrots to snack on and then I'm gonna make this Parmesan couscous with some salmon for some protein. And I've got these for dessert. So I totally forgot my lighter, but I just went over to that group of people over there who were clapping at me and they let me have one. So we're in business. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's food and it's hot. Good morning. The route to Mount Williamson is a 26.6 mile long hike with 10,000 feet of elevation gain and class 3 climbing. On day 1, I hiked 11 miles with 6,500 feet of elevation gain to Shepherd's Pass at 12,000 feet. It was so windy that night that I don't think I slept more than 2 hours and I got started at 4.30 a.m. It was a brutal slog up loose rock until I reached the chimney with another man I met along the way. This is the class three section. Here you can see me climbing up it. Okay. The summit felt like a huge accomplishment, as they always do, but this one especially. All right, one, two, three. Going down the class 3 chimney was a little bit more complex, but we safely made it. And then we had to go back down the loose rock. And then I descended 16 miles per all trails, but 20 miles per my Garmin watch and 10,000 feet to get back to my van.
Yesterday I had an absolutely wild hike. Wow, my body's feeling it today. I hiked Mount Williamson, the second tallest 14er in California. And this one was a doozy, you guys. <laughs> There's gotta be like 10 moths swarming around me. I accidentally left my door open for a little bit too long. Anyway, I had a nice lazy recovery day after my massive hike yesterday. It's been really good. I just worked for three hours this morning and literally just like <laughs> scroll on my phone, made some posts and I went for a really nice long walk, just a very slow walk because <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit sore today. For some reason, just in my right quad, it's like almost not a good sore, almost like, oh, there's a moth. <laughs> almost like not an injury, but something's kind of funky in there. Um, and then my feet and my shins and my ankles are still a little bit sore. So anyway, um, so I did that. I went for a nice long walk and then I went and got pizza and I drove for about an hour and a half or so, uh, back up north, kind of towards Tahoe. And then it's really about all I did today. Um, but I just, I have felt like this such state of Zen. That's one of my favorite things about climbing mountains, particularly really intense hikes. Oh my God, I have a moth climbing down the back of my shirt. <laughs> one of my favorite things is that they just give me such a state of Zen and peace on the inside. It's like, my mind is suddenly so quiet and so calm. My body feels so calm. I feel the state of bliss. I just feel like so elated at first. And then it's just like, <laughs> and then it's just like, just peace. And it's unfortunate that it takes such drastic crazy thing to get me to this state because <laughs> my day-to-day -day workouts don't get me here but you know it also forces me to do crazy things like this which is a good thing it is so good to get out there challenge myself physically and mentally and just grow as a person get stronger it's just so good and so that's how I felt today like Normally a day like this, just hanging around being lazy would feel really uncomfortable to me. I would feel guilt. I would feel this restless energy. I'd feel anxious a little bit, mostly related to the guilt of not being productive or uh, just like needing to get energy out. And so, yeah, like just what a difference. Um, I just love climbing mountains. <laughs> and tomorrow's plan is just all dependent on how my body feels if I'm still kind of sore and if my right quad is still bugging me, I'm just gonna lay low, probably go for a nice walk somewhere. Mono Lake is just maybe 30 minutes up the road. So I might just walk around Mono Lake or just find like a really easy hike. And then if I'm feeling up to it, I would like to go on a more challenging climb again tomorrow, like maybe find another 13er to do or just any sort of like adequate decent hike um that's not anything like too wild but yeah and then i'll probably head back towards tahoe either tomorrow evening or sunday the van adventures have been really fun um i don't know how many more i'll be going on this year because next week i gotta work for four days and then i'm going to my dad's wedding and that's a whole weekend plan to fun shenanigans in the bay area and then after that, I'm staying in the Bay Area to go to a show. And then that's going to put us into the final week of September. And then, like, you know, climbing season's almost over. But I really want to come back to this area and do Mount Tyndall, Mount Williamson's neighbor. And I planned on doing it the other day, but I just didn't have time. So, sorry, I'm distracted by all these moths. So if I can squeeze that one in before the end of the year, I'm going to. Just depends on the weather. And I'll probably take my Subaru next time just because the road to get to that trailhead was a little sketch in my van. 
we'll see. We'll see what the rest of the season has in store. All in all, I feel pretty good about the hikes I got in this year. I didn't get to Colorado. I didn't get to finish the 14ers in Colorado, but hopefully next year. This year, I got the four California 14ers in, one 13er, and I just did a lot of other really cool things, so I really can't complain. On that note, it's 11 p.m. I'm gonna go to bed. I can't believe I'm even up this late. I never stay up this late. But yeah, all right. Good night, everybody. All right, it's another morning in my van. I'm feeling a little groggy this morning. I need some coffee. ASAP. Van is trashed. <laughs> it's, it's a mess. I just need to get home and do laundry and clean out all my backpacking gear. I got pizza box. Oh man, I got work to do. My sun shower has become how I wash my hands, wash my dishes. I can't believe I didn't buy one of these sooner. I think I already said that, but seriously, this is so handy just to have like a faucet kind of thing. <laughs> All right, I'm kind of making my way back towards Tahoe and I just stopped at a nice lake. I'm gonna walk around the lake, something casual and easy for my sore calves. Calves are the most sore part of my body right now quads doing better that's good so this is gonna be nice and peaceful let's go